Yeah, what a great, uh, what a great opportunity uh, for our team uh, to get back on the floor and play. I mean, had a tough environment and an absolutely uh, grinder tough game against an experienced team that we have a lot of respect for in Houston. And it's a game that I think we've grown from, that we'll learn from, especially in this league. Um, but we're excited about uh, our game against BYU, one of the best offensive teams and a, and a great defensive team. They just got a great basketball team. They're tough to defend, um, and they, they cause a lot of problems because they play differently than what we've faced and a lot of teams that uh, we face. And they're skilled at all positions. They can really stretch the floor. And the number one in the country in assists – number three in assist rate. So you just look at them and you know they share the ball well. They can put you on your heels. They're a great defensive team and like it is in the Big 12. It's another tough game, but we're excited. We're back at the USA and looking forward to the opportunity. Uh, Coach, you know, since that Houston game, how have you and the team sort of been mentally preparing for BYU since it's your uh, first game against them in the Big 12? Yeah, uh, having been uh, a part of the league and having seen it up close now from this side of it, you know that you're always going to have to be learning. You can't ever look at this as um, you, you're, you can't be stagnant. I mean, you got to be moving forward and you got to be competitive in the way you do it. You can't just do it like, hey, we're going to walk through this. I think like today's practice, we got after it. I love our guys' approach because they love being out here. Yesterday, we watched film. We talked about what we wanted to do. And then today, our guys competed. And that's that's the mentality you got to have. It's, it's not it's not you're going to go out here and talk about what you want to do. You got to be able to do it. And that's what I love about this team. I mean, the guys responded well, and they're excited to play. Coach, um, obviously, BYU, really good three-point shooting team. Um, but it, they do it with volume as well. Um, at least from, from what I see, and it looks like they really like sh uh, getting them off early, kind of in that semi-transition. What are the challenges of trying to defend that versus a team who likes to get to, the, get to the rim in those situations? Yeah, I mean, they're averaging 13 made threes a game. I mean, that's, what, that's wild when you look at it. And it, it's a unique uh, perspective. And to your point, they do shoot them early. I mean, they'll shoot them off early handoffs. They'll shoot them off early ball screens. They'll, they'll screen away and shoot them quickly. Uh, they're just a, an aggressive team that your mentality, there can't ever be a time where you're looking at a guy that you're thinking, hey, this guy's not a threat. I mean, everybody's guarded is a threat. And, you know, had some experience playing against Khalifa, who transferred from Charlotte, who's, you know, leading the country, I think, in assist to turnover ratio, just a, a, a remarkable mismatch in the middle of the floor. And I think he's really added some depth to what they're doing and makes it even more difficult to defend. But definitely got to be on edge and got to be prepared to, to get after it the entire game. When you talk about Khalifa, um, he, you know, he's one of their highest assisters. Um, he's really good, you know, finding guys if, you know, somebody's overplaying the handoffs or whatever, you can find them back door. Um, what are the challenges of trying to defend that? And have you talked to your defenders about, you know, staying aware in those situations? Yeah, and that's where they're unique because everybody on the floor can make a three. And when you get in these situations when Khalifa's on the floor, you know, your attention to how you communicate it and your aggressiveness has to be – at a max um, you know sometimes there's teams that you play that you're an over helper off different people and you're always in a help role and this is one of those games where everybody's going to be engaged in actions at all times so your alertness and your competitiveness uh, just has to be on on go coach you guys have struggled offensively the past couple of games what have you seen against Texas and then Kansas or excuse me Houston against Kansas State that needs to change against BYU, especially going up against a team that scored 85 a game. Yeah, well, when you look at uh, this league and you look at the way you're playing, I think you've got to find a way to stay aggressive but share the ball. And when we're at our best moments, we really are aggressive and we're putting people on their heels. And now Houston's a completely different you know, component because of their physicality and their length. And, you know, would we have it over, do a few things differently 100%. So part of that's just learning your own roster in those environments and what you feel like your advantages are. But I think our team recognition of what the advantages are, I thought we got some good looks too. I mean, at times just putting pressure on the rim and making twos in a game where against Kansas State we didn't make threes. 
you know, against um, and made made some twos and got to the free throw line and then flip that against Houston. We made some threes and couldn't make it two and couldn't couldn't really puncture the inside of the defense, which makes it difficult to to get to the free throw line consistently. So, you know, I think it's finding ways to keep attacking but sharing the ball and finding ways to create opportunities for yourself uh, first and foremost through through an attack, but then making the first easy play and creating creating an advantage for another teammate. Coach, going off of the defense questions, and especially being the first time facing BYU, how do you plan to keep defense on top of it? Like you said, you have to be alert at all times. How do you keep your team for the full game, first and second half, alert on defense and ready to block those threes? Yeah, a lot of it has to do with your energy uh, and how you substitute and then short turnaround like this. Like, going to have to get to the bench earlier and try to make sure we keep guys fresh as much as we can, rotate them a little quicker than we normally would. Coach, with Khalifa, is there, with the way he can distribute from the paint, is there any sim similarity with Warren in the way that he's able to distribute and find his shooters as well? Yeah, it's definitely a great example of, of a guy that can do it. And I think when you look at the versatility in the middle of the floor, you know, they both have that same feel and vision to make great plays and make great decisions. And where Khalifa's a three-point threat, Warren being the lob threat, obviously the lob threat and three-point threat both put pressure on the basket in different ways. And that's where I'm saying there's a uniqueness to how you have to defend it because whether you practice against Warren, you know, you get a feel for what that feels like. Well, then it's still different because of the spacing that he provides. So um, definitely a lot of similarities and it's been good to practice and we've had some experience doing it in regards to the five out. With Jackson Robinson, just the height that he has and the way he's able to shoot the ball and play off the ball. I guess, what are you seeing from him and how, what challenges does he pose? Yeah, I mean, want to talk about a score. I mean, I just got score all over him. And every time he catches the ball, he looks to put pressure on the rim. So anytime uh, you're guarding him, you just got to know he's capable of putting you on your heels and scoring a basket and the attentiveness of everybody just because the way they move pieces, you better be ready to guard every everybody on the floor. Knowing personnel, this game's going to be a big deal.